morning time to make the coffee today's flavor is Maud's raspberry chocolate and um, I'm gonna have that with white chocolate raspberry creamer so today's high is going to be 75 it's cloudy We're supposed to get rain showers the rain we've been getting has been a very steady pleasant rain well not even steady it's it's showers but not torrential rains it's been actually nice rains if you like rainy days which i do um so we haven't had any big storms blowing through and we really really needed the rain so next week i think that the rain is supposed to stop but hopefully it's softened the ground a little bit because I still have a couple of hibiscus plants that I need to put in the ground. So next week my focus will be on putting the garden to bed, uh, covering up my um, outdoor furniture, and just finishing up. Maybe I'll put a little greenhouse cover out here and there and sow some lettuce seeds or some kale seeds because they like the cooler weather. So a lot of us, if you have a greenhouse, you can almost garden at least for some greens for most of the year. Um, even in here, zone 6. But I like to put the garden to bed for the winter. It gives me a chance to concentrate on something other than the garden. And I'm not a big fan of being outside in the winter. It's just too cold for me. I don't like outdoor winter activities. I don't like to go out much in the winter. So that's why I limit most of my gardening to the summertime. Um, I, I do really want to do some more of the... Um, winter sewing though. That uh, worked real well for me the, the one time I tried it. And I did it in plastic uh, bags, the gallon bags. The biggest work was just sewing the seeds in the bag and then putting them outside and then you forget about them pretty much. So, cheers! So it's my plan, the end of February, the beginning of March. Well, mid-February, I would say, is a good time to do that. To sow some uh, seedlings for outside. And you don't have to harden them off, and you don't have to do all those things that you have to do when you sow your seeds inside. So every little bit helps. You know, I don't think I could totally survive on what I grow in my garden, but it was nice over the summer not to have to buy tomatoes and, um, you know, some greens. So that was nice. So today I have to go get some labs drawn from my Medicare checkup. Um, you know, you have to check your blood levels and all that. Make sure everything's copacetic, and then I'm going to, since I'm already going to be halfway there, I'm going to take a ride out to Costco and get some dog food and fill up my gas tank. I don't like my gas tank to be below half full, um, so I just keep filling it when I see a good price on gas, I put gas in it. But <clears throat> that doesn't always happen. Sometimes the gas prices stay up there. So I found that Costco is the best place to go for gasoline, at least here in my area. So, okay, well, I'm going to have a short coffee chat today because I want to go earlier rather than later to have my labs done and hopefully it won't be too busy there because it's a big facility that uh, does a lot of the testing. 
So, okay, I will meet you over there at the budget book. All right, back at the budget book. So, yesterday I did not spend any money. I stayed home and didn't do a whole lot. Sort of just relaxed. I decided this weekend I was going to relax a little bit, so that's what I did. But... You can't make progress if you're always relaxing. But, you know, you still need to do that every now and then. Just take some time for yourself and just do things that make you feel guilty. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. It's like, ah, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing that. But I try very hard not to do that. You know, it's like, okay, I'm going to read a book all day, or I'm going to watch TV all day. And, you know, you've got that little thing nagging you going, oh, this is really wasting your time, but it's not. We all need that every once in a while, just to chill out and, you know, have a pajama day or not cook and order takeout if that's what you want to do. I didn't do that. I had stuff already cooked for dinner. But, you know, on those days, just enjoy it. You know, just pretend you're on vacation. That's why I call it staycation. Because, you know, you don't have to do all these things when, when you're on vacation. You know, I think that's one of the reasons why people love vacations. You know, they don't have to look at their stuff that needs to be done. They can look at what's already done in a hotel or a motel. or um, So I think that's why people like to get away, because you don't have all those responsibilities that you have uh, when you're in your own home having a staycation. So I guess you got to put your blinders on and just not look at all that stuff. Either that or, you know, before you decide to have a staycation, just take care of business. You know, clean your house and do your laundry and then say, okay, until next week when it all needs to be done again, I'm going to have a, a staycation week. And then it won't keep nagging you. Anyway, it seems like at my house I always have something to do. And uh, lately it's been really, really a huge project, everything. So I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying sometimes that happens. And that's what happens here, or what happened here in my little corner of the world. So today I'm going to spend money. Uh, I decided I think I'm going to get two bags of dog food. I don't know what the longshoremen are going to be doing with their strike, and that could impact the supply chain, so... And it's happened before where Costco was low on dog food. And um, so the kind that I always get, I mean, I get the uh, Costco brand, but they have different brands. But the one I always get wasn't available, so I had to get a different one. And it worked out okay, but, you know, sometimes when you switch your dog's diet abruptly... It gives them um, gut problems, you know, they get diarrhea or, and I don't want that to happen because then it, that's even more work for me because I have to clean it up. So anyway, um, I have lots of uh, five-gallon buckets in the garage that I've gathered from Walmart's bakery. They sell them really cheap. They're food grade with a lid and it's like, just a couple dollars for a bucket. So I can put uh, one bag in the bin that I use all the time for my dog food and the others I can, or the other bag I can put in five gallon buckets and store them that way to keep the critters out. Hopefully I'm not going to have any more critters. Fingers crossed, but you never know. So I'll be headed out to Costco in a little bit. So anyway, that's my budget. I didn't do too badly on the money spending this month. Um, 
the previous months during the summer I was doing garden spending so I spent money on that and now I'm uh, making sure I have everything I need for my prepper stash so um, yeah there's always something so I don't want to overbuy, but I want to make sure that I have what I need just in case. And if I never need it, well, that's fine too. But there's a good chance at some point you will need it. You know, even if it's, oh, there's a terrible snowstorm out there. We've got three feet of snow, and I don't feel like going out in it. So, you know, I think I'll just pull from my stash and make my food from that. So, okay, that's it on my budget chat. I have to get moving since I want to go early. And uh, I don't plan on buying a whole lot of other things at Costco, but, you know, they have some pretty good deals there. So if I find something else, well, then, you know, we'll see. Oh, it's still a little too early to get going, so I thought I'd have my little inspirational quote of the day coffee chat. This is the book that I'm reading from, and it's by M. Prefontaine. Cheers! So let me read you a couple quotes. I like to keep things as positive as I can on my channel. Sometimes it's not always happening <laughs> with everything going on in my house and in the world, but you know, sometimes you just got to make your own happy. That's all there is to it, no matter what's going on around you. Well, some things are so tragic, you can't, you can't help but not be happy, but let's hope those things don't happen. So, all right, uh, this is by Mary Tyler Moore. Take chances, make mistakes, that's how you grow. Pain nourishes your courage. You have to fail in order to practice being brave. So true. And this is also one of my favorite sayings, and it was by Thomas Fuller. And it's, all things are difficult before they are easy. Boy, isn't that the truth? Because I was even thinking about this generator that's going to be coming, I think October 7th, hopefully, you know, it, it'll make it here in one piece and on time. But I was thinking about that, and I, it's like, I don't know anything about a generator. I don't know how to start it. I don't really know how to hook it up. So I need to do more research or I thought maybe I could have one of my sons come over and he can help me get it started so that I know what I'm doing in the case of a power outage. So, but to me it's a little bit scary because I have to either uh, put gas in it, which I'm not planning on doing right now. Um, I'm, I'm planning on running it on propane, but you know, I have to hook it up, make sure it's hooked up right. Um, put it in the right spot. I, I imagine since I don't have it hooked up to the electrical panel that I would need some sort of extension cords. I don't <clears throat> know if I need a special one. I really don't know anything about it because I've never run a generator before. So uh, to me it's a little scary, you know, so Anything that you do at first is kind of like, well, am I going to be able to do this? You know, am I going to be able to drag it outside because it's a bigger unit and it's heavy? But, you know, uh, with my grandson living here with me, he can help me out on that. But, you know, he doesn't know anything about generators either. He's only 21. So, you know, lots of different factors come into play when you try and start something new. And I mean, even when I paint, you know, it's like, oh, is this gonna turn out okay? You know, am I choosing the right color? Um, I think that's why I don't paint more often is because I hold myself back. You know how a lot of artists, like my very favorite, Bob Ross, he just 
lets it go, you know, and he has happy accidents and he's okay with it. He just turns it into something else. And a lot of times in my life, I found that, you know, even though something was a, a, an accident or a faux pas, it, it kind of turned out for the best or it, it actually turned out better than what I had originally visualized in my head. So, yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. I mean, look at Dyson and, and Edison, all the failures they had before they finally came up with uh, something that worked. And, um, I mean, even, you know, look, look at, take your inspiration from people like Elon Musk, who, who came from a very abusive childhood, and, you know, he's a multi-billionaire, so... You know, it's possible. You know, not that you're ever going to be a multi-billionaire, but you could be the one. Who knows? And, and like, uh, was it Grandma Moses that started painting in her 80s, and uh, her artwork is worth a lot of money? Uh, she became famous. So she she did, I think, uh, I think it was Americana folk art or something. But anyway... Um, yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. What the heck? You know, worst thing, worst case scenario, as long as it's not something where you're going to blow yourself up or, you know, something dangerous. But even people take chances on dangerous things. They jump from airplanes. They climb mountains. You know, um, all kinds of craziness. But it, it, they become passionate about it. So, you know... Yeah, don't be afraid to make mistakes. It's okay. You know, I mean, if it's not something life-threatening or, or something that you did to somebody else to hurt them, a lot of times you can laugh at your mistakes. You know, I laugh at my mistakes all the time. And it's like, oh, well, that didn't go well. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that a little bit. And... Uh, it makes you think, you know, and then every day can be a brand new you. It can be a brand new situation. You know, just go from the moment and build on that. You don't have to keep living in your past and dragging all that baggage with you. It's like, what for? It's too heavy. So leave the baggage behind. Try new things. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. And, uh... Live your life, you know? I mean, we have to be conscious of things that are going on around us, you know, and try and improve that if we can. But in the meantime, live life, you know? It's it's yours to live. It's not Joe Schmoes or, or the, the, the government or this or that. It's your life. So live it the best you can, as best as you can. Even with situations where you don't have a lot of money, use your creativity. You know, um, one of the best things you can do is talk to people. You'll be surprised how many people want to help you. You know, let's say, well, I'll relate it to something that I can relate it to. Let's say you want to paint, you know, and you have no money to buy paints, or you have very little money to buy paints. You know, every week, try and, you know, spend a couple dollars. Go to the Dollar Tree or, or you know, or go to the thrift stores and see, peruse what they have there. They, they might have an easel somewhere that somebody donated. I donated an easel that took up a lot of space, but... It wasn't real useful because it was just something you could display art on. It didn't hold the painting or anything, and it was rattling around the house here for years, and I thought, I'm not going to use this. It was too big to display art anywhere. If I'm going to display my art, I'll hang it on the wall somewhere. So I donated it. So, you know, and talk to people. Tell them, you know, I really would like to start to paint, but I don't have the money right now to buy paints. And they may say, you know, I tried painting that wasn't for me, but I have all these paints here. Would you like to have them? So, yeah, using your mouth 
and, and communicating what it is you want or what it is you need, you'll be surprised how many people will help you out along your way and uh, how many gifts you can get along the way. Little interruption there, a little hiccup. No oh boy. <laughs> she is so loud. Oh my goodness. I won't subject you to that. Sorry about that. So all three of them just took off out the door because I had the screen door open. And I'm sure they saw a squirrel or a cat, or a rabbit, or something. I, I, you know, my backyard is pretty private, and I can't believe all the things that they see to bark about. Anyway, um, yeah, little Lizzie has a really, really loud bark, and she uses it all the time. So anyway, um, yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, about, not the dogs, about taking chances and if you screw up, you screw up. You just chalk that up into your, well, I'm not going to do that again. Or what can I do that kind of worked? I can add this to it, and maybe it'll work out just fine. So um, don't be afraid. Just carry on. Live your life. Be happy with what you have. And... You can always try and modify what you have if you don't have the money um, to get something brand new. It doesn't always have to be brand new. That thing, you liked it at one point for whatever reason. So uh, you can maybe tweak it a little bit and like it again. So you can stretch your money as far as possible. That's what I have to do. You know, I don't have a cash cow or a money tree. Would be nice, but that's not going to happen no matter how many mistakes I make. <laughs> I'm not going to get a money tree or a cash cow. So, okay, well, i got to make this a, sh a little bit shorter coffee chat today because um, I have to go get ready now and get on the road. Um... I don't know, maybe I'll do a car vlog, maybe not, depends on the traffic. But I'll be back after I get back from my shopping adventure. All right, well here I have this vegan steak. It's eat meaty mushroom root steaks. I ate one uh, a few weeks ago. I thought it was kind of dry. I'm going to cook it a different way this time. So I have here some hamburger seasoning that I'm going to put um, on this thing. And I'm going to let it sit with this on there for a while till I'm ready to cook it. Broke this part off. So, but <clears throat> that'll season it a little bit. And I hope it's not as dry the way I'm going to cook it. I'm going to saute it in butter. And uh, this is thawed but it's still cold so it can sit here a while longer I'm just going to pat this into the steak a little bit and see what we can come up with the spices aren't holding on there very well I think I'm going to spray this with a little bit of oil too And see if that won't keep it a little moister and then I'm going to saute it in butter and then over here I have some more mushrooms cooking so I'll um, serve that with mushrooms so let me get my oil and I'll give it a spray and see Okay, let that sit for a while. It's not dinner time yet, another hour maybe, and I can just sit here and marinate with the flavor. All right, well, I'm making dinner here. 
and I have this vegan steak. Uh, this is the second time I'm trying this, trying to saute it. In this pan I have some butter and some garlic flavored oil. So I'm just letting that heat up. And um, like I said, the last time I tried this, it was pretty dry. So I'm trying to cook it a different way. And then I also have this um, 57 steak sauce. It's, uh, I think, accidentally vegan. So I'll be trying it with a little bit of that for a little extra flavor. Um, so the directions say to cook it about 12 to 15 minutes and to keep flipping it. So on here I have the hamburger seasoning and onion and garlic powder. So the steak broke, so to put it in in two pieces. So let's give it a try. And uh, when this is almost done, I'm going to add some of this Kirkland garlic, the big thing of that. And I have some mushrooms that I cooked up here. I'll be adding some of those in the pan too. So we'll see how it turns out. Might as well put the rest of this seasoning in here. Because it didn't have a whole lot of really good flavor. So unless it's much better this way, I can't really say that I would buy it again because it was like $10 for two of these little tiny steaks. And I'm going to have that along with a nice baked potato and a nice green salad. So, all right, going to let this cook up. Keep flipping it, they said, until it browns. We'll see. And I have a little bit of cooking wine here, and I'm going to use a little bit of that to deglaze the pan. Not much, just a little tiny bit. Get all that good stuff to pour over my steak. Not steak. So then we'll see if it's worth the $10 for two of these. And I might, if I like it, I might buy it for, um, you know, a um, special occasion or... So, okay, that looks pretty good. And I'll put that over the steak mushroom steak and I'm going to put some salad in here too so I will be back in a minute once I get my plate prepared. right here is my plate I like ranch dressing on my potato on my salad put a little bit of Mexican cheese on there and this is what the steak looks like so let's go over to the table and give this a taste. It looks wonderful. And it looks, it's a nice Sunday dinner. All right, well, that looks delicious. So I'm kind of anxious to give this a taste. I have a little bit of A1 or 57, whatever. <laughs> so let's give it a try. actually looks like a steak, but so let me try it without the mushrooms first. The flavor is good. It reminds me of a well-done steak. I always 
excuse me, I always liked mine rare, and it's giving me the hiccups. <laughs> but all in all, if, if you like well done steak, I think you might like it. Let me put a little more sauce on it. It's tender. It doesn't have that juice that a real steak has. But like I said, if you like well done steak, it's very close to that. So, okay. I don't know. I may, may not buy this again. We'll see. Okay, well, I'm back from Costco, and I wanted to show you a few of the things that I got. I'm not going to show you everything. It's not that exciting. I got a big bag of dog food, and I only got one. I, I had intended to get two, but my daughter is going back to Costco next week, and I'll pick up the second bag. But the reason I didn't get two was because they had 20 um, pound propane tanks. And you know, I've said before, I want to get four all together. So I, I had two. So I picked up one of those. And probably next week, because I'll go with her, I'll pick up the fourth one. Because that was, let me get my list here, uh, the propane tank. Let's see, it was $42.99, and I bought one last week at Mark's, and I paid $51 or $52. So I thought that was a pretty good price. So I got one of those. Um, the dog food was $35. Let's see what else. Now, I bought this spice rack, and I'm going to put this in my prepper stash. So if you're in the market for a lot of very basic spices, um, this is a good thing to pick up. It's got the jars and the shaker top. And I bought a couple of these a um, few years back. So I already have two of these, but um, I've been using the spices in those. But the nice thing about this is uh, it's got 20 jars of spices, and they're all different, and it, you can get free five years of spice refills. So, and plus they have the middle of it, the cap comes off, and then you can put, um, you can put um, your utensils in there. So I'm thinking actually of getting another one of these to keep in my prepper stash. And it's got, you know, oregano and, and uh, bay leaves, parsley, just your basic seasonings. And if you need seasonings, this is actually cheaper, plus you get the revolving thing, than buying individual spices unless, well, Dollar Trees are fairly cheap and, and also... Um, some of Walmart's spices, but if you buy the McCormick or the name brand spices, you're going to be paying three, four, five dollars for a little jar of spices. So if you need a lot of spices, you're almost better off to get this. So I'm not going to open this. I'm going to leave it in my, it's heavy, in my prepper stash for future me. So another thing I bought, and this was on sale, I always used to whiten my teeth, and I've been very lazy about that, and I used to get compliments on how nice and white my teeth were. I haven't done that in about a year. So my teeth are starting to get yellow, and I hate yellow teeth. That's just my personal preference. You know, if your teeth are yellow and it doesn't bother you, then that's okay with me. But anyway, um... That ended up, did I say the, tw the spice rack was $29.99? Well, that's what it was. So the um, 
crest strips. They were $44.99 and they had $12 off. So I thought that was a really good deal. And it's got um, it's got all these strips in there, and it says it'll lighten up to 32 levels of whiter teeth. Plus, it had a bonus pack of once a month whiteners, so I imagine those might be a little stronger. But you get 40 strips of the regular, so you can you can do top and bottom for 20 days, and then the express you get 10 treatments. So you get 20 strips. So I want to go back to whitening my teeth. So I got that. Then I got um, got these lights. And they're motion activated. There's two of them. And let's see, there's a lot of Spanish and different languages on here. I want English. So they're rechargeable, and you can do three modes of light, but I wanted to get these for my closet up in my room. So, and those were, let's see if they say on here. Um, <laughs> They were like $13.99 or something like that for the two. So I got those. And those are something you can even use in a power outage and you need some light. You can use those. So another thing that I got, and I had some of these, but they were ruined from the mice, are these dried hash browns. It's good for the prepper stash. So I picked up, up another one of these, and these were, um, they were like $11. No, they, these were $8.99, and you get eight packs, so $8.99, and you don't have to make hash browns out of them, or, you know, you don't have to make the whole box, so just make as much as you need. So I got those, and then I got... These flashlights, and these were also on sale. They, they were $5 off, and I like the Duracell flashlights. They, uh, they're really nice, and I wanted to get a couple more. I have three smaller ones that I use all the time, but I want to put these just in different places throughout the house if I need a flashlight real quick. So those were um, $24.99, but they had $5 off. So I thought that was, they came to like 19 something, I don't know, I'm not a math wizard. And it includes the batteries. So I picked those up. Um, let's see what else I got. So rather than getting, they also had battery pa batteries on sale, the, the AAA and the AA, and they were $17 for a whole big pack of them. But then I thought this might be a little better because I use a lot of batteries, and I got the rechargeable. I got two of these, one to keep upstairs and one to keep down here, and you get the AAA and also the double a batteries in here so i got those and those were eh, i hate looking up these prices here uh they were 13.99 that's what they were so i got those and then i got these are sconces that you can hang up on the wall, and they're rechargeable. So I thought that was a good thing to have. That's what they would look like. And you don't need a, an electrical box or anything, and they're rechargeable, like I said. So those would be a nice thing to have in places where you don't 
want to uh, pay an electrician to run a, a sconce. And uh, also that would be good for a power outage as long as you keep them charged. So I got those and those were also on sale, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it was a two pack. No, they were $33.99 for a two pack. So I got those. And then I uh, got a couple of other little food things, but I did get these gourmet mushrooms, dried gourmet mushrooms. Now I dry my own mushrooms, uh, the button ones or the, um, oh, what are the other ones? Well, whatever. Um, but these are gourmet mushrooms and they have, they're packed in France. They're not from China, which is nice. It has uh, yellow boleotis, never heard of those. It has oyster mushrooms, portabella, uh, porcini, and they're all dried. So I thought that was nice. And that was $13.99, so I got that too. And then I spent $16.79 to fill up my gas tank. And the price was $2.66 a gallon. So gas was pretty good there today. So um, other than other few little things here and there, that was pretty much my Costco haul. So I'm going to wrap this up now and go relax. And um, so, yeah, that's all I have for you today, my friends. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. It helps my channel grow. Don't forget to share, and thanks for watching.